Welcome to Health Talk with Nicole Tatro and Dr. Martha. I'm Dr. Martha. Unfortunately, Nicole couldn't be with us today, but we do have a guest with us, Ellen Grimes. She's the Dean of the Dental Hygiene Program at Vermont Technical College. She was my instructor back at UVM, and I just love Ellen. She's gonna share with us today a little bit about the dental hygiene career and what the education would be for that career. So Ellen, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you come to be a dental hygienist? Well, I actually grew up in New Jersey and my best friend's sister was a dental hygienist. And I said, hmm, that's interesting. So she was working in an orthodontist office. And for those of you who don't know, an orthodontist office is, an orthodontist is someone who works with braces. Yep. And she got me a job as a dental assistant in that practice. And I, it was nice being a dental assistant. At the time, dental assistants really didn't do very much in the mouth, and I really wanted to be in the mouth, and I liked teeth. Um, unfortunately, I grew up in an area that didn't have fluoride in the water, so I had braces myself. When I had my braces taken off, I had 13 cavities. Oh, wow. That was very sad. Yeah. So I decided that I didn't want anyone else to have to go through what I went through with my teeth. So I went to dental hygiene school. I went to the University of Bridgeport Phone School of Dental Hygiene. Mm -hmm. And the first day I walked in, I said, I wonder what it takes to be able to teach dental hygiene. And the first day you said that? The first day. Wow. Yeah. And um, at the time, all you needed was a bachelor's degree. And my parents were very nice and said, whatever you want to do, Ellen, we will help you financially to yeah. become a dental hygienist. So that's how I became a dental hygienist. And then I just got more and more educational degrees and wound up here in Vermont, which was probably the best thing that ever could have happened to me. For me, definitely. It, well, <laughs> well, that's nice to hear. Yes. Um, but. I, I mean, I love Vermont, who doesn't love Vermont? And our program was at the University of Vermont for a while, and then um, it transitioned to the Vermont Technical College. And What year was that, Ellen? That was in 2004. 2004. And Vermont Tech built us this beautiful clinic, and I don't know, maybe you wanna show a picture of yes, our beautiful we clinic? we have a great picture of the Vermont Technical College. It says dental hygiene. It's actually at the Williston campus. Correct. Right? Correct. Right at Blair Park. Yep. Um, and so we have um, to become a dental hygienist, because I think that's what we wanted to talk about a little bit. We have a baccalaureate degree program now. Oh, so, fantastic. Yep. When did so that? This last that? year we started last that. Last year. Right. So essentially what happens is you can apply right out of high school and um, it, you would be with us at our beautiful clinic for three years. Um, and you take courses in the sciences, like anatomy and physiology, chemistry, nutrition, and then you take dental hygiene courses, like um, oral pathology, uh, dental anatomy, dental materials, and you actually work on patients. And so I definitely wanna tell the community about our clinic. So students first start out seeing patients um, First, first they start out on mannequins, something that looks something like this. Yes, um, we always and, named ours. Right, right, <laughs> right. And then they um, work on each other. Mm -hmm. And then we have patients that come in to our clinic from the public. We charge very, very reduced fees. So yeah. to have your dental hygiene care done, it's $25, and wow. uh, which is, that is amazing. pretty low compared to the general public. And then we also do x-rays. Um, which are anywhere from $15 to $30, depending upon what type you need, which again is significantly what reduced a bargain. compared to the others. Yeah. We're always looking for patients that haven't been in to see a dental hygienist for a long time. So um, if anyone's looking for that, certainly give us a call at our, at our dental hygiene clinic and we'd be happy to schedule an appointment, but don't call until after September 1st because there's nobody there in the summertime. <laughs> Everybody's so. out on break right now. Right, yes. exactly. So Ellen, with the bachelor program, um, when we started, it was an associates of science, right. a major in dental hygiene. Correct. And we, I mean, our first semester, we were working on mannequins and then we were working on each other. Um, is that still true, that first year? 
Yes. The bachelor's degree, you still? Yes, the first semester is true. What was happening is is because dentistry and dental hygiene is changing so quickly mm -hmm. that we just couldn't fit everything into the two-year curriculum. Right. So now, instead of being in clinic for the two years where you're working on each other and mannequins and patients, mm -hmm. you'll be in there for three years. And so at the end of the third year, mm -hmm you will actually graduate with an associate's degree and then the last year is totally online so while you're wow. while you're working and making money right then you can earn your baccalaureate degree after that that is fantastic um, right what flexibility exactly yeah exactly which is why we developed it that way yeah. and we just want our students to be the best prepared we have very very high marks, I mean, rarely do, oh, I guess I should say that at the end of the third year, students have to take what we call licensing examinations in order to get your dental hygiene license, in order to practice dental hygiene. We have extremely high scores. We rarely have anyone who's not successful on those exams. Wow, so, that's fantastic. Um, I have a very, very dedicated faculty who will do just about anything to make sure that our, our students are successful. So I'm, I'm very fortunate. So. so it's still the national board. Still the national the board Northeast exam. The regional board. The, well, that's now been changed. Oh, now. it's been changed. It's called the uh, oh, CDCA um, Commission on Dental Competency Assessments. But essentially, it's an exam where you have to treat a certain type of a patient, and you have examiners come in to make sure that you do it competently. Right. So it's pretty much the same thing, they just changed their name. So it's still part written, part, part written, practical. Part practical, Okay. correct. So the practical piece is when you're actually working on a patient correct. and you have certain guidelines you have to Correct, follow and we and had 100% passage on that wow. exam this year and 100% on our national board. So very, yes, <laughs> yes, we're very, very proud of our That's program. So exciting. Very, very proud of our students. They work very oh. hard. So essentially, you know, how what I like about dental hygiene is that um, you're working with people. Yes. Um, dental hygiene is more about education. We're trying to educate patients on proper oral health, making sure that they brush twice a day floss at least once, and I know people don't like to floss, but as the saying goes, just right. floss the teeth you want to keep. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and, so true. And now there's, you know, there's all kinds of devices out there. You don't have to just use the regular floss in between your teeth. You can, mm -hmm. There's these cute little things out there, the individual plackers, you've probably seen them. Yeah. They work really well. I, I can't get my husband to floss his teeth any other way, and he keeps them in his car. Great. So when you're at a red light, you know, pull out your little placker and floss your teeth and and it you know anything yep. to remove the plaque or the bacteria from in between the teeth is really important yeah I think it's really about um, the more often they're willing to go in and reduce those plaque counts right exactly Just go in and try to reduce the number of bacteria that's in there the every 24 hours it, is the better is is at least so once a day is is ideal um, so that's what I really like about dental hygiene is making sure that you're, you're educating your patients. And then what I see is a little bit different from dental hygiene versus say nursing is we deal with some ill patients, but whereas nursing is dealing with ill patients All most the of the time, yeah. right. Um, and then the other thing about dental hygiene is it's usually normal work hours, you know, eight yes. to five for the most part during the week, whereas nursing your weekends and evenings and things like that. Right. What's really nice about dental hygiene is usually hygienists start out at about 28 to $30 an hour, yeah, which is money. a really wonderful career with three years of education. Yeah. Um, and it's flexible. So if you wanna work one day a week, two days a week, yes. um, we, it is primarily a female oriented profession However, we'd love to get more males. We usually have one or two males in our class each year. And oh, nice. there's, I don't understand why we can't get more males into a profession, but we certainly would like to do that if possible. So Thank you. Um, yes, I know. When I was working out in Washington State, I worked with a couple of male hygienists, and that was my first experience. And I'd worked in a couple of other states at that point. Right. So, um, 
Yeah, I think it's great. We have more and more male nurses. You know, it would be nice to open Absolutely. up all career fields and have them be Absolutely. where there wasn't any gender bias. It was everybody was exactly. involved. Exactly. Exactly. Um, because people like to relate to, and so men would relate to men. Females would relate to men. Exactly. Um, so yeah, exactly. that would be great to open that up. So Ellen, we're gonna start to wrap up a little bit, but what I'd like to do is show our pictures. Oh, certainly. Um, so we certainly. have a couple of pictures from the clinic itself. So and that's this is a picture of um, one of our faculty who's showing a student how to use a, an ultrasonic scaler, um, okay. which is one of the devices that hygienists use to remove the, the um, hard deposits from teeth. Um, and then this is our beautiful 22 chair clinic that we have computers at every station. And so this is where the students learn how to work on patients and also where our patients would come in to yeah. be treated. Look how clean that is. Oh my gosh. Yes. It's 10 years old now, but it still looks brand beautiful. new. Beautiful. So, yes, it came out really well. So. And this is just showing a student. Some more clinics. They were more of our clinic. Yep. Just a little different angle. And our students also do take, as I said, x-rays on patients. So this is our little radiography clinic. Um, and they start actually by working on uh, Dexter mannequin, which I, yeah. I didn't bring a picture of, but obviously you can't practice taking films on people because right. it's not good, not good for you to have multiple x-rays. That, and you have to learn about angles and things like that so you're Correct. not Correct. people. Correct, correct. <laughs> <Yeah. clears throat> this is my great niece, Anna. And she's actually Aww. now nine years old, but this was me actually treating her. So we do treat patients. We treat, and as a dental hygienist, you treat young children. We do recommend that at one year old, you should bring your child in to have an examination and get them used to being in the dental office, even just take a ride in the chair. Yeah. We treat adolescents, we treat um, adults and even and a lot of times we have a lot of elderly patients as well. People are keeping their teeth longer. So, right. and now with the link between oral health and systemic health, meaning that um, we found that patients that have periodontal disease or gum disease actually have more physical problems like heart attacks and strokes. So you do want to make sure that you keep your teeth really clean. Yeah, so. it's great, isn't it? It is great. Dental hygiene it's a great is just profession. a wonderful I profession. I could not have picked a better profession. It was. It was the best choice for me, that's for sure. Wow. Well, Ellen, thank you so much for your time today. I know you are a busy woman, <laughs> but <laughs> I appreciate you taking time out to come and hang out with us here at Health Talk. And please send any questions, any comments, and any emails to us. Uh, we do have a website. It will be shown at the end of the show. And uh, please come back again. Have a great summer, and we will see you in a couple of weeks.